In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These little vignettes that we get in the Gospel are always so short, and yet so filled with meaning. And if we allow ourselves to enter into the story, there are many details that we can ponder in our hearts and in our imaginations. Imagine what it must have been like for this woman who had been bent over for 18 years. What sort of work could she do? Who would find her attractive or useful? Who would take her seriously and give her the respect and the dignity that she deserved? So severely bent over perhaps that the last human face that she had seen, well, she couldn't even remember. All she could see was the top of a child's head who occasionally would look up at her with curiosity or perhaps a stray dog who wanted food. So when Jesus heals her, the first thing that he says is straighten up and she sees his face. He looks at her and most importantly, she looks at him and his eyes are the first that she has seen in a very long time. And his eyes say to her, you are worthy, you are loved, you are accepted, you are welcome. Can we imagine a more joyful moment? And what is the response of those who hold the reins of the control of the religious institutions? How dare you do such a thing? Healing on the Sabbath. Keep in mind, the Sabbath was given for compassionate reasons. For rest, as God rested from His labors in creation, so human beings were invited to take rest from the sweat and toil of their labors, and yet it had been turned into some rule by which the leaders could manipulate and hurt other people. Why did they have this motive? What kind of barren soul could feel that way? What kind of loveless heart? Clearly their intention was to keep power, to keep control, if the people wouldn't obey the rules, then the entire religious institution, structure, and hierarchy would collapse. Their very livelihood depended on it. Motive, intention, is important. Most of you have probably read the little scripts of T.S. Eliot's play, Murder in the Cathedral, the story of Thomas a Becket, the Archbishop of Canterbury, who was murdered by the King of England in 1170, and his shrine became such a popular place of pilgrimage for hundreds of years, millions of people. If you were to go to Canterbury Cathedral today, you would see all of the steps worn into a sort of a concave shape because of the pilgrims who made their way up and down those stairs. In T.S. Eliot's play, Thomas a Becket is pondering what is probably about to happen to him and in his imagination he sees it well he doesn't want to be martyred but he also sees that he will be very famous and loved and venerated for all of these years and suddenly the muse from heaven speaks to his not so lovely motivation and says alas Thomas the highest treason is to do the right thing for the wrong reason." Motive matters. One of my favorite translations of St. Paul's epistle to the Philippians uses that word in Philippians 2, the so-called canonic hymn, which talks about how Jesus emptied himself of his prerogatives and came down from heaven in humility to serve among us. It says, not what we usually hear, he counted not equality with God a thing to be grasped, but it says... He counted not equality with God a thing to be exploited. How about that? Not trading on the divine prerogatives. Jesus would rather literally be known as the son of an ordinary Joe 
Joseph the carpenter, than to be known as someone who could claim status. His work among us was to show the way of love and compassion, a religion without force, a religion without guilt, a religion without manipulation. As we ended our time together in the commemoration of St. Bernard last Wednesday, we remembered what our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, often says throughout this land, if it ain't about love, it ain't about Jesus. In our Episcopal Church, we say that even the celebration of the sacraments, uh, that motive and intention is important. The theologians tell us that for sacraments to do what sacraments are supposed to do, they have to have proper form, proper matter, proper minister, and proper intention. And that is to say that if a couple on their wedding day say the right words but don't have the right intention, have no intention whatsoever of keeping their vows, then there is a defect in that sacramental union. Motive is important. So we would ask ourselves the question, whenever a moral decision comes before us, the question that we must ask is, am I trying to influence the behavior of another for their benefit or mine? Important question to ask, isn't it? And that's true of our individual behavior. That's also true of our systems, even systems like the church. Systems which have all too often used shame and guilt and fear to motivate. I would say that the more that Christianity identifies with its Jewish roots of prophetic justice, as we heard today, the call of Jeremiah, others like Isaiah and Amos, the more that we identify with that tradition of prophetic word, of justice speaking truth to power, the more authentically Christian we are with all of the opportunities that that presents. The more that we forget it, the less authentic we are with all sorts of people claiming to be messiahs and chosen ones walking among us. In our epistle today, the author of Hebrews begins by reminding us that the approach of people to God in the earliest days of coming to know him was really filled with fear when God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai and the giving of the law it was a time of fire and fierceness and a sense that even if the, the mountain itself were touched it would be so holy that no one could bear it but the author of that wonderful epistle the anonymous author whose name no one knows goes on to say but you've not come to that same mountain anymore but to a new mountain, a new heavenly mountain, a new Jerusalem that cannot be taken away. And I would suggest to you that when we come to that mountain, we actually come to Calvary, the hill, the mountain on which the God who humbled himself calls all of us who are stooped over in this world to straighten up and to look him in the eye. And when we do, we hear said to us, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sin of the world. The one who says to us, You are worthy. You are loved. Just as you are. You are precious and dear. That is our sacramental intention. That is our motive now and evermore and unto the ages of ages. Because, brothers and sisters, if it ain't about love, it ain't about Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.